Hi everybody. Before starting this video, I want to apologize to the Hungarian speakers who are following the channel. I do not speak the language and therefore have difficulties pronouncing the names of the protagonists of this story. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to tell me in the comments which Hungarian athletes you would like to see featured next. Let's get started. 1956, Melbourne. The most famous water polo match in history is about to begin. But before we talk about that, let's analyze why the Olympic swimming pool was jam-packed for this particular event. 1953 is one of the most important post-World War II years in international politics, with the end of the Korean War, the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II, the rise to power of Nasser in Egypt, and probably most importantly, the death of Soviet leader Joseph Stalin. His successor as the first secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, Nikita Khrushchev, delivered a speech commonly known as the Secret Speech in February of 1956, during which he criticized Stalin's political vision and cult of personality. The split between the Stalinists and the more liberal, for lack of a better word, elements of the party will have repercussions beyond the Russian borders, and in particular in Poland and Hungary, where social and national demands add fuel on top of the critics against the Stalinist elites. 1956 marks a series of unprecedented revolts on the other side of the Iron Curtain. The Polish demonstrations of October have a relatively positive outcome. The civil war is avoided and the opposition obtains certain concessions, particularly on salaries and freedom of worship, despite the return of the Soviet control over the country. The situation is quite different in Hungary, where the communist hegemony is more recent and more violent under the iron fist of Stalinist Maciasz Rakosi. The Hungarian leader was dismissed by the Kremlin in July of 56, following a growing discontent in the country. This is too little to stop the protests against the regime and the AVH, the political police of the party, whose violence fuels the demonstrations. The AVH is struggling to maintain order during student strikes in support of Poland. The Soviet coat of arms is cut from the Hungarian flag as a symbol of protest. This flag, freed from the communist emblem, becomes the symbol of an increasingly important protest. The help of the army is requested by the AVH. The Hungarian army is divided between the two factions. Civil war seems inevitable. The insurgency begins on October 23. As the Hungarian troops seem to gain the upper hand over the Soviet army stationed in the country, around 100 athletes set out for Melbourne, where they will participate in the Summer Olympics, the first taking place in the Southern Hemisphere. The athletes are embarking on a trip to the other end of the globe, and most have not had the opportunity to train for months due to the political situation. Even if their situation is dire, Hungary is one of the great nations of world sports in the mid-20th century. The Magyars finished third in the medal table of the 1952 Helsinki Games behind the Americans and the Soviets. Two years later, the Hungarian football team, led by legendary forward Ferenc Puskas, lost the World Cup final against West Germany in what the Germans called the Miracle of Bern. Indeed, the Magyar team dominated the football world so much that nobody thought they could be beaten. Sign of the unrest in the country? The Hungarian football team announces its non-participation for the Olympic Games in September of 1956. Hungarian athletes were going to participate in the Games to in conditions that are not conducive to sport performance. Upon their arrival in Melbourne, the athletes learn about the tragic outcome of the Budapest Uprising. Despite the more than unfavorable conditions, the country's athletes will carry the Hungarian colors high. They win an impressive total of 26 medals, including 9 titles, finishing in 4th place behind the USSR, the USA and Australia. Budapest-born gymnast Agnes Kelity was the most successful athlete of the Games with 4 gold medals. Kelity, who turned 100 in 2021, is now the oldest living Olympic champion. In the absence of the footballers, the water polo players make up the star Hungarian team of these games. Hungary is the number one nation in water polo and has won three of the four previous editions. After easily coming out of the group phase, the Hungarians face the five remaining nations in a tournament to decide the winner. They win all their confrontations before the penultimate match. If they win against the Soviet Union, they will be sure to finish at least second. For the Magyar team, the scope of this match greatly exceeds that of water polo. If the Soviets facing them are mere athletes, they represent communist oppression in the eyes of their opponents. An athlete from Hungary later recounted that there was no hostility between athletes from the two countries before they arrived in Melbourne. This changed dramatically when the Hungarians learned about what happened on November 4th. Few people in Australia realized the symbolic significance of a USSR-Hungary confrontation. The attendance at the Olympic swimming pool showed everyone that this was not an ordinary water polo game. The 5,000 seats were occupied, mainly by Hungarian expatriates. 
As for the players, the Hungarians had planned to provoke their opponents by insulting them in Russian, a language they had learned at school. The match begins under an extreme tension. At 2-0 for the Hungarians, a punch by Russian player Boris Markarov on untold Bervari sparked a series of fights. At the very end of the match, blood was shed as Hungarian Ervin Zador received a blow to the face. The sight of blood was the straw that broke the camel's back for the spectators who rushed to the swimming pool to take on the Soviet poloists. The police had to intervene and the referee had no other choice but to end the match early in order to calm the crowd and allow the athletes to exit without risking getting hurt. Images of Zador's bloodied face, a symbol of what had happened a month before, made the rounds of international media which covered it almost as broadly as the events of Budapest. The Hungarians, without Zador, wounded, won the competition with a victory in their last match against Yugoslavia by a score of 2-1. Yugoslavia, a unique nation in the Eastern Bloc, the only one west of Moscow to have managed to keep its independence. Symbol of the country's uniqueness, a telegraph from its leader, Josip Rostito to Stalin, on which was written, Stalin, stop sending people to kill me. We've already captured five of them, one with a bomb and another with a rifle. If you don't stop sending killers, I'll send one to Moscow, and I will not have to send another one. Unfortunately for the Hungarians, the situation was different in Budapest. A few days after the athletes left for Melbourne, the Red Army had surrounded the country. The provisional government tried to ask Western countries for help. The call went unanswered. On the one hand, the risk of an open conflict with the USSR was deemed too high. On the other hand, France and the United Kingdom were involved in the Suez Crisis, which also focused the attention of international observers. On November 4, 1956, the Red Army entered the Hungarian capital, only 12 years after the Battle of Budapest at the end of World War II. Around a thousand Red Army tanks rolled over the city, putting an end to the 1956 Eastern European revolts. The capture of the city was quick, but brutal. Prime Minister Imre Nagy fled to the Yugoslavian embassy in Budapest, but was ultimately captured tried in secret and then executed in 1958. During the games, nearly a third of the Hungarian athletes tried to gain political asylum from various Western embassies without success. It was finally Henry Luz, director of Sports Illustrated magazine, who offered his support for political asylum for all the sportsmen of the Eastern Bloc who applied for it. About 30 athletes made the decision to go to the United States. Most of them never saw their homeland again. Amongst the dissidents, Ervin Zador, who emigrated to the United States, and Agnes Skeleti, who obtained the Australian citizenship. The Hungarian water polo team continued to dominate the following Olympics, winning the title in 1964 and 1976, under a flag flocked with the Soviet coat of arms. The memory of Prime Minister Imre Nagy was rehabilitated in 1989. The last Soviet troops left the country in June of 1991. In 2000, the Hungarian water polo team won its first Olympic victory since the fall of the USSR. On the podium, the players carried the Hungarian flag, freed from the Soviet emblem. This victory also took place in Australia during the Sydney Games, 44 years after Melbourne. Hungary remains the number one country in men's water polo to this day with nine Olympic titles. I would like to end this video by pointing out that it would be easy to draw a parallel between the capture of Budapest on November 4, 1956 and the water polo match of December 6 of the same year. The courage of the Hungarian athletes in the face of adversity surely does deserve respect and admiration. Let us not forget too quickly, however, that the lives of the Soviet athletes who faced them were undoubtedly closer to that of their Hungarian counterparts than what the temporal and cultural distances can let us understand. As Alexander Solzhenitsyn once said, gradually, it was disclosed to me that the line separating good and evil passes not through states, nor between classes, nor between political parties either, but right through every human heart, and through all human hearts. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this story, please put a like and subscribe. It will really help the channel a lot. In the meantime, I would like to wish you an excellent day, and see you soon on Out of Bounds, Legendary Athletes.